Welcome back to the Registrar's Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Registrar of Deeds of Plymouth County. We've been doing a series of uh, events each month uh, identifying the process for new home buyers. We started with uh, the commitment letter from a lender. We went to a realtor in the process that a realtor would bring someone through. We then went to an attorney who identified the process um, of going through the purchase of sales agreement and also the importance of even the offer now based upon some recent court decisions. So I have a great guest on this show. Uh, home inspectors are sometimes being let go because of the competition for properties. Uh, it is a mistake. I've always said that. I know my guests will agree with me. So I have a guest today. Mark Roderick of Stryla Home Inspections. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, John, thank you for having me. Yeah. So why don't you talk a little bit about the role and the importance of home inspections? So one of the things I like to do is um, obviously we'll go around and we'll point out deficiencies. Um, and we try to keep those at a minimum and we try not to blow things out of proportion. But another thing that I and actually my company likes to focus on or our company likes to focus on is um, education. We really want to educate our buyers or our clients um, we really want them to know how their home works and what they can do to keep their home in working order. So um, during the process, I'll show them different things that they could do to keep their furnace running better, change their filters and stuff like that. Just basic homeowner knowledge that not everybody has. So most people um, that are uh, at the purchase and sales stage end up looking for a, a home inspector to give them um, ideas of what they need to understand about their property as part of the closing process. Yeah, typically I get contacted after they have an accepted offer. Yeah. So I get their, their offer gets accepted and then they reach out, reach out okay. to us to Prior uh, to the person's Yeah, to schedule an inspection. Yeah. And then they include all that language in the purchase and sales things that might need to be fixed or deficiencies. Yeah, I I don't want to speak for the the agents how they handle it. Yeah. Um, I provide a report that breaks everything down for them and we okay. have a color coding actually and that's typically what we're looking for is safety items. Safety items is what we kind of focus on. Okay. It's not per se a, um, a building code inspection, okay. it's a safety inspection so right. we try to point out safety items. And who are the people that usually engage your company? As far as? Uh, hiring you to do the, is it are the, the lenders or the parties themselves? No, it's actually or? the people purchasing the home. The home the yeah, the home, owners. the potential yeah. potential homeowner yeah. is the one that reaches out to okay. us. Yeah, oh, right. That's good. Yeah. So, why don't you just walk our viewers through, particularly sure. those that are out there looking to go through the process for the first time? Yep. How that would work? Your contact with them, and what what they would be doing with you okay. before you write up your report. So we would get a contact. Um, you can book online. You can call the office, stuff like that. We'd come out to the site on the predetermined day. Um, we typically will work on the outside until everyone kind of gets there. Um, I spend a lot of time in the basement. For me, the basement is the most important area. Mm -hmm. That's where all the big ticket items are. Mm -hmm. um, that's where all the expensive stuff is, and that's where you're going to do a majority of your maintenance. Um, I spend a lot of time in the basement really going through all that stuff with my clients to make sure they have a better understanding um, then we'll get in the attic if there's access. Um, and then once we clear the attic, it's kind of smooth sailing after that. It typically doors, windows, plugs, you know, your cosmetic stuff, your appliances and stuff like that. But the real, you know, meat and potatoes is the basement. You know, if you're potentially going to find something off-putting, it would be either in the basement or the attic. So boilers, water heaters, things like in, that. Yeah, electrical. Right? Like, so we really like, focus on structural, yeah. electrical, plumbing, heating, those types of things. Okay. Um, right. And then um, how typically uh, fast does the report get completed? We provide the report that night. Oh, great. Yeah, it's electronic. Um, it's sent out to everybody, you know, the agent and the um, prospective client or buyer. Um, you have everything that night, and we always make ourselves available, you know, if you have questions, because it is daunting. Um, sometimes it's a 70-page report. There's red arrows everywhere. It can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So we make a, a conscious effort to be available to our clients after. If you have a question, don't hesitate to call. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to support them as much as we can. So typically, what are the things you're finding these days? Um, wet basements seem yeah. to be, yeah, those are kind of common. And sometimes we can, you know, offer suggestions to fix those relatively easy. Mm -hmm. 
Um, pest damage, you know, that's a, that's a um, hot button topic. Mm -hmm. Mold is always fun. Um, so like I said, some people find mold very off putting, other people don't have a problem with it. Um, sometimes you have to customize your inspection to the people you're working with. You know, some people have an aversion to certain things. Some people come in with predetermined ideas of what could be there. So you kind of help walk them through that as well. Um, we want to make sure all the systems are working. Electrical systems can be a little bit um, scary to some people mm -hmm. just because they don't have a good understanding of it and stuff like that. Yeah, we're, we've had conversations over the years of how much the buyer is educated right. uh, because there's so much available before they even come into the home mm -hmm. on, on the web, on, online just to see the property right. from different directions. It even is. It, it is daunting. Walls. It is a daunting um, for some, and you know, a majority of the younger kids, you know, and so they just, they'll be hitting from so many angles. So a lot of my job, or what a lot of I try to do, I try to de-escalate a lot of that stress for these mm -hmm. kids, you know, so they can understand and kind of see what's going on and stuff like that, yeah. you know. That's good. So um, I assume uh, in this area that mm -hmm. we're in, uh, Plymouth County and Mm -hmm. generally uh, this, this end of the world, uh, there's, there are a lot of n newer homes, but also there's a lot of older homes. Right. And, and I'm sure you give uh, properties a different look based upon um, the age and age of uh, uh, the parts of it that you're talking right. about evaluating. Yeah, a newer home tends to be a little bit more easy because a lot of the stuff is obviously newer. So we mm -hmm. know the age of the roof. We know the age of the heating system. We know that the structural is brand new. Um, yeah, we go into some pretty old homes, and that's when you really have to slow down, pay attention, because there's things that you don't normally see. You know, we find wooden nails, um, you know, purlins, just things that people don't even know what they are. Right. Um, so you really have to be careful and be, you know, educated. And we are constantly educating ourselves and trying to learn more. And, you know, so we're staying on top of things as well. And the older homes I know generally uh, can have some pest issues. So there's a thing, um, powder post beetles. Right. If I don't find powder post beetle damage in an older home, I get a little curious, you know. It's not the end of the world. You know, termites and carpenter ants are much more evasive than powder post beetles. But yeah, you have to know what you're looking for. You have to know the signs and there are clues, so. So what are the most common questions from your clients of, of you as you uh, begin the process of evaluation? Um, is there water in the basement? Is yeah. the basement dry? Can I finish the basement? Those are my favorite ones. Um, usually everyone asks me, can I move this wall? Um, can we take this wall down? Wow, interesting. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, it's, those are the probably top five. Yeah, well, um, so. and some of them are carrier walls and they can't. So that's the thing. Yeah. We, always, um, we always educate them and um, I always tell my clients, anytime, there's literally nothing you can't do these days. Mm -hmm. um, it always comes down to money and tolerance. Mm -hmm. So I always educate them and I tell them, you know, get three estimates, make sure whoever comes here is licensed and bonded, and don't always go with the cheapest guy, you know, rely on references and stuff like that. So. Right. But yeah, right. you could basically do whatever you wanted in a home, but again, sometimes when you get the price, that'll determine whether or not you want to take on the project. You so you obviously know your business. How do you typically get referrals? Um, I try to provide a good service. Yeah. That's what I do. Um, the agents do tend to refer us. Um, and then sometimes we'll meet agents on the other side. We try to uh, keep up with social media you know, and stuff like that. Right. Um, sometimes it's a friend of a friend. You know, I'll, I try to build relationships. When I work with you, I want you to be able to say, hey, I have a guy. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try Mark? He's right. really, really good. Or any one of the other guys in the company. There's, I'm not the only one. The company, there's six of us. So there's somebody always available. Yeah, we're coming out of a, a crazy period in everything. Mm -hmm. uh, real estate, um, home building, home inspections. Right. Uh, how did you handle the COVID crisis as a home inspector? It actually, I was, or we were, the most busiest during COVID. Okay. It really didn't impact us, which was very surprising. Great. Um, yeah, we were concerned for a little while. I mean, we had all our PPE. We did everything. Um, there were times where pe no one showed up, and it would just be me or the other guys walking through the house. Um, but yeah, we weren't really impacted that much by it, which was surprising. Right. I, I was thinking it was going to cut into the business a little bit more than it actually did. Yeah, it certainly um, was an active period, uh, you know, kind of surprising that it was, during yeah. that crisis, every woman was looking at real estate. Yeah. 
you know, and um, it's obviously slowed down a little bit because of the rise in interest rates, but mm -hmm. uh, it, and it was a crazy period of competition for houses. Yes. And a lot of people, um, as we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. waived home inspection. Yeah, very scary. Um, we're still encountering it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not for everybody. There are some people that can maybe squeak by without a home inspection, and there are other people that really, really need to get that inspection. Um, and I also know there are people that'll have a home inspector come in prior to even listing their property so they identify issues that will be of concern to the potential buyers. How often do you have those people calling you? Uh, we do not do those. Oh, you don't? Uh, the, those so-called walk and talks. Okay. Um, yeah, they became very prevalent during this whole period okay. of high competition. We made a decision as a company we would not do those okay. because it's basically a race to the bottom okay. when you're doing stuff like that. And you're really not providing a full service. Okay. I mean, it's just like you and I just walking through this building here. Yeah. I can see things, but I really can't dig in. Yeah. And if I don't give you a report, you have really nothing concrete to now form your opinion on. Okay. Right. So yeah, we we decided as a company that those just weren't going to be something that we do. Right. So let's talk about the future of home inspections. Okay. Any uh, changes you see um, regulation-wise or um, technology-wise coming up in the future? So we pride ourselves of trying to stay up with technology. Um, we're all digital as much as we can be. We actually, um, the owner of the company purchased a crawl bot so we can now go onto manufactured homes and check the crawl space and oh, stuff wow. like that. Yeah, there's been talks about drones and stuff with, between me and the other guys, we're always have, oh, we right. always have the fun new tools. Sure. Um, we did an inspection yesterday with an infrared camera. Wow. Yeah, so we really, you really have to kind of keep up with it because right. you want to provide the best service that you can. Well, I think the time uh, that you talked about returning the information is amazing to do within 24 hours. Yeah, you're going to get it that night, yeah. so you know. You know, and there is some, I think there's a certain time period that they have to be able for inspect the inspection period, and we want to give them that knowledge, you know, as soon as we can Great. so they can form those opinions and do what they need to do. Great. So, Mark Rodericks of Strilo Home Inspections, I want to thank you very much for sharing with our viewers things that they should know. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Okay.